All right. John chapter 5, verse 39. The Bible says, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that testify or it is they that bear witness about me. Meaning, I am the reason of the scriptures. I am the reason of the scriptures. Esther, it is good to see you. God bless you, my beloved. I am <clears throat> the reason of the scriptures. So the reason of the scriptures is to reveal the person, Jesus Christ. The reason of the scriptures, it is to reveal the person of Jesus Christ. Yvonne, it is good to see you. So he says, you search the scriptures. For in them you think, you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures, they are there that bear witness of me. They testify of me. They reveal the person of Jesus Christ. Look at the Bible in the book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. John 1 verse 1 to 2. The Bible says, in the beginning, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Watch this. He was in the beginning with God. The word, word there is the same in the Greek rendering, is the same as logos. In the beginning, in the beginning was the logos. The word, word there in Greek, it means logos, meaning it, it, the ideas, the thoughts of God. So in the beginning was the idea. The thoughts, that's the logos, or the mindset of God, the plans that God had. That word, word, is the same in the Greek, logos, meaning the mindset, the thoughts, the thinking pattern, the plan. So meaning the thoughts, they precede Kabadosha, the writings. Understand this. The thoughts, they precede the writings, meaning... <clears throat> Remember the scriptures are they that testify of me. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. So the scriptures, they speak about me. The scriptures, they speak about me. They testify about me. Meaning Jesus is older than the scriptures. Pay attention. <clears throat> Jesus is older than the scriptures. I remember at one time, at, at the age of 12, he was in the tabernacle, you know, and they, he, he began to speak to them, and then they were, they were amazed, they were mesmerized, and said, young men, how old are you there to ask him how old he was? And I, I, I believe the answer that he would have given was, do you want to know my age? Is it from my mother's side or from my father's side? Kabatosha. On my mother's side, I might be 12, but on my father's side, I was there in the beginning. So, Jesus precedes the writings. He precedes the writings, meaning Jesus is older than the scriptures. Why do I say Jesus is older than the scriptures? For something to testify of you, it means you were there before the testimony. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but the scriptures, they are there that testify of me. So Jesus is older than the scriptures. Why? Because for something to testify of you, it means you had been before the testimony. So the scriptures, what do they do? The scriptures, they give evidence of me. The scriptures, they give evidence of me. So Jesus is the message of the scriptures. Jesus is the reason of the scriptures. Jesus is the message of the scriptures. 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. Watch this. 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. Praise God. 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we, we looked upon and have touched, with our hands concerning the word of life. That which we have seen. That, that which was from the beginning. That is the word. 
And remember, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and God was the word. And then when you go to verse number 14, and it says, and the word became flesh, and it dwelt. So now John 1, 1, 1 John is saying, that which was from the beginning, the word, Jesus, which we have heard, we heard about him through the scriptures, the prophecies, the law of Moses, the sound, we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. When did they see him? In John chapter 1 verse 14, when the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, the same word that they had heard of, that they had heard of, that now they have seen and we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. That day it refers to the word. That is Jesus. It is referring to the word. That which was from the beginning, the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. We heard about the word. They prophesied about the word in all scriptures. They testify of me. They, prof they spoke about, they heard about the word through the prophets. They heard about the word through the Psalms. They heard about the word through the law of Moses. That which they had heard, now they have seen how. John 1.14 And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So Jesus is the reason of the scriptures. He is the logos of God, the mindset, the thoughts, the thought pattern. Now watch this. Revelation, parasitia. Revelation, revelation, <laughs> revelation 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse number 13. He is clothed in a robe, dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is what? The word of God. Who is he that is being spoken of? Jesus. Because remember, the re revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called. The word of God. He is called the word. So Jesus is the word. The logos of God. The thinking pattern. The purpose. Jesus is. So all scriptures are written to reveal Christ. So, the, so Jesus is the, re, the reason behind the writings, Kabatosha, of the prophets. He is the reason behind the writing of the Psalms. He is the reason of the writings be, behind the law of Moses. So now look at Luke 24. Luke chapter 24, verse 25 to 27. Luke 24, Luke 24, 25 to 27. Luke 24, verse 25 to 27. Apostle, it is good to see you. Apostle Tembo, it is good to see you. Look at uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 25 to 27. Remember, this was the, after they are coming back from Emmaus. And they met these two gentlemen that they were discussing about the, 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 the sufferings of Christ. And the glory. They were discussing about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Yet they did not know him when he appeared before them. Now look at verse 25. And he said to them, now Jesus answering them, All fools slow of heart to, heart to have believed all the prophets have spoken. So what was the message that the prophets were meant to be speaking about? Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses... And all the prophets, he interpreted to them in the scriptures the things concerning himself. So Jesus began to interpret to them in the scriptures the things concerning himself. So Jesus explained all the signs. He explained all the symbols. He explained all the metaphors in the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Because he is the reason for the scriptures. He is the reason for our preaching. Because he is the logos, the mindset of God. So Jesus began to expound to them the things concerning himself in the scriptures. So what was he expounding to them? What was he explaining to them? He was explaining to them the concealed Christ 
in the Old Testament. And he was saying, it was me. The rock that followed you, he began to expound that I am that rock. The tree in the garden, he began to expound, I am the tree of life. That was in the garden that Adam rejected. So he began to expound to them the things concerning himself. Beginning at Moses, when he says beginning at Moses, it means beginning from the first five books. Beginning at Moses from Genesis. He began to expound to them the things concerning himself. So today I'm going to be looking at a few things that he, he, he began to explain that way in the scriptures. The shadows that he began to explain. That that shadow, it was not, it was metaphorical. It was symbolic. It was speaking of me. So he began to expound to them the things concerning himself. In the scriptures, he began to reveal himself. So Jesus is the message of the scriptures. So the unveiling of Christ unveils the believer. So when Christ is revealed, the believer is revealed. When, when we unveil Christ, the believer is revealed in Christ. Okay. So when we see Jesus, in him you will see yourself. Why as he is, so are we. Remember, it's not a feeling, but it's a knowing. It's not a feeling, but it's a knowing. Most of you, you you're, you're born again, but you want to feel that you're born again. It's not a feeling. It is a knowing. It's not a feeling, but it is a knowing. Re okay? So Jesus is the center and the focus of the scriptures. So he expounded in the scriptures the things concerning himself. So anything that he did not expound on, it did not concern him. So it's not everything that is in the scriptures that applies to us. Just because it is written, it does not mean it applies to us. That's why he says, oh foolish ones of slow of heart, to have believed all what the prophets have said. This is what the prophets were meant to say. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory. That was the message of the prophets. That was the message of the Psalms. That was the message of the law of Moses. Because Jesus is the logos, the reason behind. In the beginning was the word. That word, word means logos, the idea. The logos, the thinking pattern, the plan of God. So Jesus is the reason of the scriptures. So he began to expound to them the things concerning himself. Meaning not everything that is in the scriptures concerns us. For he is the message of the scriptures. The scriptures, the Bible says, they testify of him. They testify of him. So the scriptures, they are not there to talk about business, about this. The scriptures, they talk about him because he is the reason. In the beginning was the word. The word word means logos, the plan, the intention, the logic of God. So Jesus is the reason of the scriptures. Jesus is the reason of the scriptures. So you being born again, it's not a feeling, it's a knowing. So you'd be like, oh, but I don't feel like I'm born again. It's not a feeling, it's a knowing. That word knowing, knowledge, epignosis, accurate, precise, comprehensive insight. You understand? Praise God. Right. I want you now, let's go back to John chapter 1, 1. John 1, 1. Ah, parazi, gia, doho, jalamana. Penlop, it is good to see you, my beloved. God bless you. Uh, my premiere is here. Praise God. You know, when my premiere is here, I, I need to calm myself down. <laughs> I need to calm myself down. John chapter 1. Go back to John chapter 1 verse 1. John 1 1. God punished the devil. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. We identify that that word word means logos. In the beginning was the logos. Logos means the intention, the plan, the purpose. So there is a purpose why Jesus came. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? 
And the good news that I have for you is we, are part we have witnessed the sufferings of Christ and we are partakers of the glory. So we don't focus on the sufferings, we focus on the glory. That's the reason he came. The sufferings of Christ. And the Bible says we are witnesses of the sufferings and partakers of the glory. Kaya Bahazia. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Now go to verse 14. And then the Bible says in verse number 14, And the word became flesh, and it dwelt amongst us, and we have seen his glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. That was it. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything that was made that was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of man. The light shines in darkness and darkness shall not overcome it. Watch this. The light shines in darkness and darkness shall not overcome it. Guess what? You have the same light, Gobosha, because if Jesus is in you, you have the light and that same light that is in you shall moko tebosha. Darkness will not overcome it. You are the light of the world, a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hid. You are the light. I am the way. Gebo Shata said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Look at John 14. I want to show you something. I'm, not, I'm about to punish the devil. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse number 6. John chapter 14, verse number 6. I'm about to punish the devil. Get ready. <laughs> the whip is out. Oh, I'm about to punish him. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse number 6. Copa Rosigia do Honta Lagaskia do Hosha. Mm, 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 mm. Jesus said, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way. I don't have the way. I don't have the way. I am the way. I am the way. The truth. I don't have the truth. I am the truth. I am the life. I don't have life. But I am the life. But the prophets, but the prophets that came, the prophets that came, they came to show the way. Mm. Jesus did not come to show the way. He is the way. The prophets like John came to show the way. The prophets like Isaiah, Nahum, Obadiah, David, they came to show the way. But Jesus did not come to show the way because he is the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I don't have truth. I am the truth. But the prophets that came before, they prophesied of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that was to come. They came to show the way. But Jesus did not come to show the way. He is the way. Prophets came to show the way, but Jesus is the way. Look at Deuteronomy 18. Like I said, I'm punishing the devil now. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 18 verse 15. Deuteronomy 18 verse 15. Parosia. The Lord your God. This is prophet Moses speaking. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is prophet Moses is speaking. And he says what? Kaya Badosha. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. Moses is telling you that I'm a prophet. <laughs> Moses is telling you that I'm a prophet. And he says, the Lord will raise up for you a prophet like me. What was, okay, watch this. I want you to understand something. It was Moses that brought about deliverance from the children of Israel, from Egypt. Right? It was symbolic of what Christ would do. So the movement from one location to another was deliverance. That is what Moses did. And he's saying, I am. Watch this. Moses is saying, there is a prophet like me. That is coming. What did Moses do? He brought the children of Israel from one location to another. But the prophet that is coming is going to move you from one location to another. He's going to move you from Mount Sinai to Mount Zion. From the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. That movement is deliverance. So now, I'm punishing the devil. Now he says, the Lord will raise up for you a prophet like me among you. From your brothers, it is him you shall listen. He's not talking about your purpose. The prophet that is being spoken of is not your papa. 
The prophet that is being spoken of is Jesus. And he says, ye here with the prophet that is coming, you need to listen to that man. And it was on, on the day of transfiguration. God punished the devil. On the day of transfiguration, all the prophets appeared. Elijah was there. Moses was there. Jesus was there. And then the Bible says, Peter said, let us build tabernacles for these guys. And then the, there's a voice that came from heaven. And it says, forget Elijah. Forget Moses. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So Moses had already prophesied that there's a prophet that is coming. So the reason of Moses teaching and Moses preaching was to tell you about the prophet that was to come. I did deliverance. I moved you from, from Egypt. But there is one that is coming. He will move you from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. He will move you from Mount Sinai to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. That movement is deliverance. But that is the prophet you ought to listen to. Don't listen to me. Forget me. Forget about me. Forget about everything that I did. Everything that I did was a shadow of what was to come. I gave you manna. But the one that is coming, he, he will not give you manna. He is the bread of life. When you eat him, you will live. They ate manna, they died. Because it was a shadow. A shadow of what was to come. Ah, God punished the devil. And then he says, I gave you water in the wilderness. Through the rock. That rock. Listen, it was him that I'm talking about that he will come. Not only will he give you water, he is the living water. Oh, Shatangye Bosha. So what I was doing was a shadow of what was to come because you could not comprehend it. That's why the Bible says, I have many things that I want to say to you, but you cannot pre comprehend them now. But when the spirit of truth comes, so with them, they did not have the spirit of truth. So he gave them, he gave them Christ in shadows. The bread, it was in shadows. The water, it was in shadows. But there is one that is coming. Moses is telling you, forget about me, guys. There is one that is coming. He is the reason of my preaching. He is the reason of me being here. Why? Because Jesus began to expound to them the things concerning himself, beginning at Moses. And all the prophets and the, the, the law of Moses and the sounds, he began to tell them about himself. That the brazen serpent, it was a shadow, guys. But the one that is, is coming, he is the real deal. When you look unto him, you shall live. I gave you the brazen serpent. It was a shadow of what was to come. The ark of Noah was a shadow of what was to come. He is the reason of my preaching he is the logos the idea the thinking pattern the mindset of god he was referring to jesus for he is the message john 8 verse 56 to 58 verse 56 to 58 john chapter 8 oh god punish the devil john chapter 8 <clears throat> John chapter 8, verse 56 to 58. Oh, gebambandos gia do hoja la mandia. Watch this. Ye emparas gia do hoja la hadia suja gaba hadia suja gentele gia sutra hadia bahas gia do hoja bahata gabadia. Okay, let's go to verse 55 for pretext. I know my wife would, uh, would be angry with me that I've just gone back to 55. I just want pretext. But it's still John 8, 56 to 58. But I just want to look at pretext. But when you have not known me, I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do not know him and I keep his word. Watch this. Verse 56. Your father, Abraham, your father, Abraham, rejoiced that you would see my day. And he saw it and it was glad. Watch this. Listen to the Jews. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years. You are not yet 50 years old. And you have seen Abraham. How is it that you are not yet 50? 50. You are not yet 50 years old. And yet you are saying you have seen Abraham. And Jesus answered, he said to them, 
Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was I. Before Abraham, he did not say I was. He said was I. In the beginning was Jesus. Ah. And Jesus, okay, Bosha. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So he's now telling the Jews, because they are saying, he's saying that the day that Abraham saw me, he rejoiced. The day Abraham saw me, he rejoiced. And the Jews are saying, How is it that you are saying that you Abraham rejoiced? You are not even 50 years old. And what did Jesus say? Before Abraham was I. Before Abraham. Watch this now. Watch this. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was I am. Ah. So they picked up stones, threw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Now watch this. The question now is, when did they see Jesus? When did Abraham see Jesus? Remember. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures, they are there that testify of me. I am the reason of the scriptures. I am the reason of the prophets. I am the reason of the law of Moses. I am the reason of the Psalms. So now he gets to a point and then he does. And then they say, but you are not even 50. Jesus, you are a small boy. How can you say that the day that your father Abraham saw you, he rejoiced? You're not even 50. You're a small boy. Then Jesus began to expound to them the things concerning himself in the scriptures. So what did Jesus do? He said, your father, when he saw me, he rejoiced. Now, where did Jesus and Abraham meet? It was on Mount Moriah. Gobo Shatayam. Isaac was just symbolic of what Christ would do. The day that God said to Abraham, bring your son Isaac for sacrifice. That was the day that Abraham saw Jesus. How did he see Jesus? When he was about to sacrifice Isaac. Remember, Jesus, God said, no, listen, listen, hey, cool down. Isaac is not the real deal. Isaac is a shadow of what is to come. Do not sacrifice your son. Okay, Bosha. Do not sacrifice Pastor Amy. Do not sacrifice Josephine. Do not sacrifice Mary. Remove Mary from the altar. There is a substitute. Look behind you. And the Bible says, and there was a lamp that was caught in the thicket. That lamp was Jesus, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world. So that is the day that Abraham saw Jesus. When he saw the lamb that was caught in the thicket, the place where you were meant to be sacrificed, the place where you were meant to be crucified, there was a substitute. He removed Josephine and he said, remove Josephine. Josephine cannot pay for the sins. My son Jesus, the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Replace Daisy with my son. Replace Florence with my son. Replace Pastor Amy with my son. Amy cannot pay the price. But my son, I will. I will. And then Abraham, when he was asking God, said, But there is no sacrifice. And, all, and God said, I will provide myself. Meaning, I am the sacrifice. So I am the reason of the scriptures. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that was to come. The, the realm that was caught in the thicket. That was Jesus in a shadow. So when Abraham saw the realm that was caught in the thicket. The Bible says and he rejoiced. Yet the Jews. They were too carnal. They were looking at his age. But you are not even 50. How do you say that your father Abraham when he saw us? But they did not understand. That's why he began to expound to them the things concerning himself within the scriptures. I am the realm that was caught in the thicket. That was Jesus concealed. So he began to expound to them that I am the reason. I am the reason. Why? Because the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus was in a shadow. Jesus was in a shadow. So then after his resurrection, he came and he had 40 days with his disciples. He was now teaching them, expounding to them the things concerning himself in the scriptures. That it was me. That ramp that was caught in the thicket, it was me. The brazen serpent, it was me. The ark of Noah, it was me. It was I. He began to expound. He began to expound. So the scriptures, they testify of him. They bear witness of him. Jesus was in the shadows. 
the rock that followed them, it was Jesus. The bread, the manna that, the manna that they ate, it was Jesus. But in a shadow. Why? Because he said, I am the bread of life. If you eat of me, you will have life. I am the bread of life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am that I am. So Jesus was in the shadow. So here's the thing now. What I want you to understand is, do not focus. Mm. Let me whip the devil. Do not focus on shadows. Do not focus on symbols or on focus on metaphors. Why? They were pointers to him. The shadows were pointers to Jesus. What do I mean when I say the, the shadows, the symbols were pointers to Jesus? To Jesus. The water, pointer to Jesus. The oil, pointer to Jesus. The rock, pointer to Jesus. The manna, pointer to Jesus. Okay, look at John 4.10. John chapter 4 verse 10. God punished the devil. <laughs> John chapter 4 verse number 10. Glory to God. John chapter 4, verse number 10. The Bible says, Jesus answered her. Hey, Gebosha, this is at the well. My God, I'm about to, oh, I'm about to bring out something here. I'm about to bring out. Pay attention. Come closer. Don't be distracted. <laughs> Cassandra, it is good to see you. Yvonne, it is good to see you. Yvonne, Yvonne, you have got two Yvonnes here. Yvonne Stafford, Yvonne Rita. Good to see you. <clears throat> Now watch this. God uh, Feda, it is good to see you. Watch this because someone said, uh, what about me? No problem. Watch this. Are you ready for this? God punish the devil. <laughs> John chapter 4 verse number 10. And Jesus answered. <clears throat> watch this. Pay attention. I don't want you to miss it. Oh, this, is, this will liberate you. This, this will liberate you. Jesus answered her. If you knew the gift of God. And who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink. You should have asked him and he would have given you living water. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Watch this. <clears throat> Jesus is at the world. He is saying, listen, do you know who is asking for water? If only you had known. Watch this. If only you had known who is asking to say, give me water. You would have asked him and he would have given you, given you living water. Meaning, Jesus will not just give you water, but he will give you living water. He will not just give you water, but he will give you living water. Watch this. Pay attention. Verse number 11. Verse number 11, 11, now verse 11 to 15. Yeah, 11 to 15. The woman said to him, <clears throat> Say, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself. As did his sons and his livestock. Yet here yeah, we're still dealing. This is Jesus in shadows. Jacob. They gave them water. <laughs> they drank from that water. And they died. But he says. I don't just give you water. I give you living water. The water that I give you is eternal. <laughs> the water that I give you is eternal. Your fathers gave you water. You drank, you died. But the water that I give you, it is living water. Watch this. Watch this. You are, are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus then said to, to her, Everyone who drinks of this water, who thirst again, the ones that drank from Jacob's well, they, they would thirst again. 
But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst again. The water I will give him will become in him. Watch this. The water I will give you, it will become in him the spring of water, wailing up to eternal life. The water there, it referred to the Spirit. Remember, they used water, it was symbolic because Jesus was sealed, concealed. He had not been revealed. So water was symbolic. Water was symbolic. So they drank water from their fathers. They, from their fathers, Jacob and all these, they drank water from there. But the Bible says, those that drank from that well, they will still thirst again. But whoever drinks of my water, you will not thirst again. Because the water that I give you is eternal life. Pay attention. The water there was symbolic. Symbolic of the spirit. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Oh God, punish the devil. It was symbolic. John chapter 7. Look at John chapter 7. <clears throat> John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verse 37 to 39. John 7, 37 to 39. On the last day, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Whoever believes, Whoever believes, so in you believing salvation, you have the living waters. And when you have the living waters, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And the water there was symbolic of the spirit. Watch this. Now this he said about the spirit. He was speaking of the spirit. So there is nothing in the water. The water was used. It was symbolic of the spirit. So the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. In your belly are they flowing rivers? Are they rivers? No. It was symbolic of the Spirit. So that means you are a carrier of the presence and the Spirit of God. The Bible declares, it said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Meaning, out of your belly shall flow the Spirit. You have the Spirit of God. Because remember, you are the embodiment of the, of the, of the presence of God. You carry the presence of God when you have believed you, are, you become the embodiment of the presence of God. So you don't go around looking for, for anointing. You don't go around with a bottle looking for water. That water was symbolic because Christ had not been revealed. But when he spoke, he said, The water that I give you, your fathers, they drank, they still thirst. But the one that I will give you, it is living water. And that water was symbolic of the spirit. Meaning, you as a believer, you have the spirit of God. You have the spirit of God. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He's not talking about water rivers. Said, Father, fill my cup. Fill your cup with what? Why do, are you looking around with the cup? Say, Father, fill my cup. Let it overflow. Why do you want a cup yet you have the living waters out of your belly? So they used water because the spirit was not yet given. They used water because the spirit was not yet given. Gabadoja. Now that we have the spirit, now that we have the spirit, why are you looking for water? The water was symbolic because the spirit had not been given. Even when John comes in, he's baptizing with water. Because the spirit had not been given. With John's baptism, there are two. There is John the John's teaching, baptism, you got John the teaching of repentance. Then you have John the practice of the dipping in water. Why was he dipping in water? So that you would fulfill the prophecy that on whom you see the spirit descend, he is the one. After he saw the spirit descend, he stopped. So John was baptizing with water. Why? Because the spirit had not been given. Then he says, there is one that will come after me. He will not baptize you with water, but he will baptize you in the spirit. Why? Because the spirit has now been given. So the water was symbolic of the spirit. But because the spirit had not been given, because the spirit was only given upon his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And this is the reason of the scriptures. 
to reveal Christ, the sufferings of Christ, and the glory that was to come. So you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures, they are they that testify of me. So Jesus is the reason of our preaching. Jesus is the reason of the scriptures. There is no other message except the message of Christ. I know somebody said, yeah, oh, but yeah, this and all that. But uh, yeah, what, what? cool down, relax. I'm going to punish the devil. I'm going to punish the devil. So now that you have the spirit of God, now that, listen, this is for the mature. This is for the wise. I know somebody said, <clears throat> yeah, but men of God, you know, with, with the way you're preaching, it's like you're, you're, you know, you're attacking, you're attacking men of God. Listen, let me tell you something. <clears throat> Uh, let me tell you something. I, for one, I am not a flyby. We started preaching way before Facebook. Before Facebook. All, all my years in ministry, I would say maybe 20 years of my life, I've been serving. I've served men of God. Whether you call them great, small, whatever, I've served them. And I served diligently with all my life, with all my heart. I gave up everything. I even gave up my own life to serve. So I, for one, whether you call them fake, whether you call them this, whether you call them whatever you call them, I, for one, can never attack any man. Reason why, reason why, <clears throat> ye might fall now and you expose him, hey, hey, hey. but there is a gracious God full of grace and truth. The man might go and say, I'm sorry, and I'm holding on to that. So for that reason, I can never, whether you call, whether you call them fake or whatever you call them names, I, for one, I don't have that grace to attack a man of God. But what do I do? I, I preach the undiluted message. So because I'm preaching a message, so you see, <clears throat> because of doctrines of men that have gone ahead of us, the Bible says they have made the word of God of none effect. So what I do is I just, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed of the gospel, rightly divided. So what I just do is I bring enlightenment. Remember, revelation is progressive. So they might be still lagging behind with revelation. Maybe they will catch up. Revelation is progressive. Maybe they are still doing the water thing. I have no problem with them doing the water thing. I just bring enlightenment to say, no, listen, uh, uh, my seniors, the water was just symbolic. These are the scriptures to back what I'm saying. This, they were symbolic because the spirit had not been given. But to some it will seem like it's an attack. No, it's not. I'm just bringing in. It's, it's the same thing. Watch this. It's the same thing. Um, my, the time that I grew up. <clears throat> now some of you, you know, maybe my age now. See, so you're trying to do your calculations. <laughs> The time I grew up, there were no mobile phones. My generation. The, the, then they were introduced and we had, uh, what do you call this? <clears throat> you see, if you were seen with this big, big Motorola, most of you, you don't even know it. You never touched the Motorola. You had a Motorola, a big Motorola that had an area you had to pull. <laughs> and you had to look for network. You'd be looking for network with this big, big phone. And then as time went on, they introduced the Nokia banana. <laughs> they introduced, there was a Nokia, a cold banana. It was like an arc. You know, you slide it. And then they introduced the Nokia. You don't, most of you don't even know these phones that I'm talking about. Now you see my age, you know. I'm not a flyby. All the time that I was behind the scenes, I was serving. And every man that I have served, if they want to be truthful, they will tell you, I've served with all my heart and I've been faithful and loyal. Up until God said it was time. It was time. 
That's why I appreciate every man that I've saved. I appreciate every woman that I've saved. Why? Because I have learned things from them, things to do and things not to do. I learned from them. So I, their mistakes, God was teaching me. He said, you see what the mistake they made? You, you don't repeat it. So I learned. So it's not about, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not all the bad. There is good in these men. There is good in these women at the end of the day. They might make mistakes here. Not a problem. My learning is to learn from your mistake that, okay, you made this mistake. I will not do it. So I will do the good. So they had the Nokia. It came out. Then they had, after that, then they had the Ericsson. I, you, you know, you know, you don't, uh, Josephine, do you know the Ericsson? <laughs> the Ericsson would have, uh, you'll have uh, different faces, different colors. You remove the blue. Today you have a blue one. Tomorrow you'll have a red one. To, tomorrow you have this one. These were faces that will be put on your phone. Okay? So, but it was progressive up until they got to the new Nokia. It wasn't green in, you know, the screen. It was now like a bluish purplish. They were getting towards a screen that had light. Then they had the Motorola Razor. You don't know it. <laughs> Those days you would move around with your phone. It was on your belt here. Then everybody would know that he's got a mobile phone. But guess what? All that it was progressive from the big Nokia that they had up until now now they've come to a place uh, uh yvonne said motorola i had one yeah yvonne now we know your age now <laughs> so now we get to a point whereby from the big nokia the phone does the same thing but it has been upgraded so they get to a point where by now my wife she's got some some phone i don't know she i say i call her she'll be like hello hey it's now on a phone on a watch so, but at the end of the day, revelation is progressive. So there are certain men and certain women that might still be practicing certain practices. It does not mean that they are fake. It just means that there is lesser light. Okay. Hear me and hear me well. So if a man of God is still doing oils, is still doing waters, is still, it does not mean they are fake. It just means that they have not been enlightened. It's lesser light. All right. So the water was symbolic of the spirit. Yeah, so that you know. I'm not a flyby. I did not just wake up and I was sharing with this guy. <clears throat> he was like, yeah, yeah, these Facebook preachers now. Yeah, you just come here. And, uh, and I say to him, with all, with all humility, uh, the uh, yeah, Blackberry. Uh, Josephine knows the Blackberry now. Blackberry was, uh, it was, Blackberry was new. Hey, Josephine, you. Yeah, 3310, those are the phones. Blackberry is new, Josephine, please. Blackberry is new. When you do Blackberry, what is it? Blackberry, what? Blackberry, pin something, something, and all that. <laughs> but so I was talking to this gentleman. He was like, oh, yeah, you can't just this and all that. And I said, with all due respect, with all humility, uh, I might have been behind the scenes and all that, but there are there are certain men that have served under that have brought me on platforms that even you even in your dream you will never be on that platform even in your dream you will never be on that platform i've i've ministered in stadiums given a platform to minister in a stadium i'm talking of a stadium i'm not talking about you with 20 people and then you come here and say we are attacking no i've ministered in stadiums with great men it's so humbling. But these are men that made me to have such platforms. Whether they are wrong in whatever they do, I will not attack them. Who would have given me a platform to minister in a stadium? We're talking of a stadium here. We've been there. So don't think I'm just a flyby. I just came up and you. <laughs> even in your dream, you never even dream in a, in a stadium. But you're saying I'm at, I'm, I will never attack a man of God. Never. I just correct through doctrine because the purpose of the of, of of doctrine is for teaching for reproof and correction in righteousness so back to the message so the spirit mm, the water was symbolic of the spirit so they they used water because the spirit had not been given now look at first peter <clears throat> first peter 1 verse 10 praise god first peter 1 verse 10 first peter chapter 1 Verse 10, 1 Peter 1, 1 Peter 1, verse number 10. 
Whoa. Concerning this salvation, concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully. They prophesied, they prophesied, the prophets, what were they prophesying about the grace that was to be yours? Meaning, watch this, okay, <clears throat> watch this. Concerning inquiring what person, that means the prophets they did not even know. They were prophesying the sufferings of Christ and the glory that was to come, but they did not even know the Christ. They were prophesying about somebody that they did not know. They were inquiring what person. Or what time the spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. So they did not know. They did not know. Okay? So, so all their prophecies, all their prophecies, all their prophecies was to prophesy about the grace that was coming. The grace that was coming. So the, all the prophets sees of the prophets in the old testament it was about prophesying about the grace that was to come but it was prophesied in different manners they used different types they used lot they used noah they used the ark they used uh, you know they were they were that's why the bible says in in in, in sundry times god spoke to our fathers by the prophets in divers' manners. Those are divers' manners. Different way, methods, different ways. In divers' manners. But in these last days, he, had, he has spoken to us by his son. So the prophets, they prophesied about the grace that was to come. Meaning all their prophecies, all their prophecies was the grace that was coming. Making all the testimonies of the prophets was about jesus the testimonies of the prophets was about jesus why because jesus is the finality of the scriptures he is the finality of the message now look at revelations i'm about to close okay i'm about to close i'm about to close revelations revelations 19 revelations 19 verse 10 <clears throat> revelations 19 verse 10 praise god revelations 19 verse 10 then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who, who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the, te watch this. This is where I don't want you to miss. Watch this. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of testimony. Meaning what? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Meaning what? Meaning that all prophets, all prophecies testify of Jesus. All prophecies testify of Jesus. Remember, in the Bible, you have two types of prophets. In the Bible, you have two types of prophets. You have, uh, you have minor prophets. In the Bible, and you have major prophets. Minor prophets, they prophesied about events. Major prophets, they prophesied about the Messiah. That's why Jesus said, All foolish of all foolish ones, slow of heart, to have believed all the prophets have spoken. So, what was the message that the prophets were prophesying? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? That is the mission of the scriptures. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word, word means logos. The intention of God, the mind of God was salvation. Why? Because of separation. So there is nothing else in the scriptures except salvation. So the minor prophets prophesied about events. Major prophets, they prophesied about the, the Messiah. So the mission of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus Christ. The mission of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus Christ. Watch this. John 16, I'm about to close. John 16. John chapter 16, verse 12. John chapter 16, verse number 12. John 16, 12. John 16, 12. Are you still here with me? I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. 
But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will declare to you the things that are to come. Ye will glorify me, for ye will take what is mine, ye will take what is mine, ye will take what is mine, and declare it to you. So if the Holy Spirit is taking, is, is talking through a man, the center of the message is to glorify Jesus, not the man. So when a man is prophesying, the center of his prophecy is Jesus. Remember, the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy is the spirit, the testimony of Jesus. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So when the prophet is prophesying, the center message of that prophecy should be Jesus. The center of the message should be Jesus. Glorifying Jesus, not glorifying the man. Glorifying Jesus, not glorifying the man. Uh, so, the scriptures are given not to talk about business, but they are given to talk about Christ. And the role of the Holy Spirit in your life is to reveal Christ to you. So, when Christ is revealed to you by the Holy Spirit... The Holy Spirit will take what is in Christ and declare it to you. So what is in Christ is in you. What Christ can do, you can do. So the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you what you carry, what you possess, what you can do. So Jesus, watch this. I want you to understand something. Because somebody was saying, oh, but so what about uh, prosperity? Okay. Let me just enlighten you for two minutes, okay? Just two minutes. Two minutes about prosperity. Jesus, remember this. Uh, prosperity is not a doctrine in the Bible, by the way. Watch this. I'm, I want to enlighten you on a few things. Oh, this will help you. This will help you. Jesus never preached about prosperity. Why? Why? Jesus never preached about prosperity. Why? Because in a kingdom, in a kingdom, everyone is prospering. In a kingdom, everyone is prospering. So what was Jesus, what was the message of Jesus? Repentance. So the issue, the issue within the kingdom is not prosperity. The issue within the kingdom is repentance. That's why you see these prophets, they came, major prophets, they came, they prophesied. When they prophesied, kings, they tore their clothes and they began to repent. The message of prophet John was repentance. Apollos, remember Apollos, only knew the message of repentance. The baptism of John, which was the message of repentance. But then came Aquila and Priscilla. And the Bible says they taught him in a more excellent way. So the kingdom, within the kingdom, the issue is not prosperity. Because Jesus never preached about prosperity. Why? Because in the kingdom, everybody is prospering. But the issue within the kingdom was sin, repentance. Repentance. So everybody in the kingdom is prospering. Why? Wealth is common in the kingdom. You, you will never hear Prince William talk about money. When you are a royal child, you don't discuss about wealth. It's, it's part of you. When you are a royal, it's only the poor that will talk about wealth. They will be discussing about how much they want or how much they have. They do, it's the poor that talk about money. But I want you to understand this. Prosperity is not a doctrine. Prosperity is not a doctrine in the Bible. Why am I saying that? Because in a kingdom, 
it is not an issue in a kingdom it is not an issue why the citizens lifestyle reflects the king's reputation the citizens lifestyle yeah the lifestyle of the citizen it reflects the king's reputation please hear this i'm about to say something here that will help you and this will help you the citizens lifestyle is is reflected by the king so nothing is worse for a king than a poor citizen that is why your prosperity is important to god watch this look at psalms <clears throat> i want to show you something look at psalms look at psalms 35 verse 27 psalms 35 verse 27 watch this let those who delight in the righteousness in my righteousness shout for joy and be glad and say forevermore great is the lord great is the lord who delights in the welfare of his servant so god finds pleasure in the prosperity of his children citizens so because the lifestyle of a citizen is a reflection of the reputation of the king so jesus wants you jesus wants you to look the way you will represent him as he is so he's concerned about your wealth he's concerned about your health because you are a reflection of him on earth so he wants you to prosper he wants you to be in good health because you are representing him as a citizen you represent him that's why he says as he is so are we so when we pray now when we pray we don't pray for things when we pray don't pray for things pray to be a citizen ah pray to be a citizen just be a citizen that's why the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so your prayer should be you become a citizen your prayer become a citizen so, so prosperity is not a doctrine in the bible jesus never preached about prosperity because in the kingdom everybody is prospering but you need to become a citizen why because the lifestyle of a citizen is a reflection of the king so what happens now watch this pay attention just be a citizen so the moment watch this the moment the moment the moment you become a citizen you put pressure on the king the moment you become a citizen you put pressure on the king so don't be praying for things my god my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in his glory so prosperity so somebody said yeah but you can't just preach jesus christ can't just preach jesus christ what else do you want to preach you talk about prosperity jesus never preached about prosperity because he, the king in the kingdom in the kingdom in the kingdom wealth is not an issue what was an issue was sin that's why he came to repentance because of separation of men from god of men from god he came to bring that for you to become citizens you are royalty in the royal family they don't discuss about money royal family hey, where, where are we going to get money to pay our bills in a royal family so what do you need to do just become a citizen when you become a citizen you put pressure on the king because the lifestyle of a citizen is a reflection of the king
So Jesus wants you to prosper, wants you to be in good health. Why? Because you are a reflection of him. As he is, so are we. So there is no other message except this message. That's why Paul in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, he says, When I came to you, I desired to know nothing else except Christ crucified. There was no other message. This was the message I desired to know when I came to you. I desired to know. I desired to know nothing else except Christ crucified. I've said this before and I'll say it again. My beloved, when you understand the message of Christ, everything that concerns your life is covered in that message. When Christ is revealed, you are revealed. Because when Christ is revealed, the believer is revealed. Meaning, what is in Christ? Remember, you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. You are created in Christ, in, not outside of Christ. So everything that was used to create you is found in Christ. So what cannot be found in Christ cannot be found in you. What is in him is in you. That's why he says the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will declare to you. He will declare to you what is in me. The glory that my father gave me, the Holy Spirit will declare it to you. That same glory is yours. That's why the Bible says we have witnessed the sufferings of Christ and we are partakers of the glory. Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, Paul is praying for Philemon. Said, let the sharing of your faith become effectual, effective, impactful. How does your faith become effective? How does your faith become impactful? Because somebody will be telling you, oh, you need faith. You don't need faith. The faith that you have is, is it's, it's his faith. Our faith is in Christ Jesus. He, it's his faith. So how does your faith become effectual? How does your faith become effective when you begin to acknowledge every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus? When you come to a place of epignosis, accurate, precise, comprehensive insight of what is in Christ is in you. When you acknowledge that, your faith becomes effective. Your faith becomes impactful. So if the Holy Spirit is talking through a man, the center of the message is to glorify Jesus, not to glorify the man. So that is the message. He began to expound to them the things concerning himself, beginning at Moses, the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, the things concerning himself. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but the scriptures, they are there that testify of me. I am the reason of the scriptures. I am the reason of the message. I am that reason. And I declare and I decree over you. What Jesus suffered, what Jesus suffered for, you are a partaker of his glory. I declare that the sufferings of Christ, you are a witness, but you are a partaker of the glory. And I declare and I decree, you are the glory of Jesus Christ. You are the glory. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that is to come. You are the glory. I declare and I decree. Every desire of your heart, the glory will manifest in the name of Jesus. Every desire of your heart, the glory of Jesus will manifest in your heart. And I declare and I decree, you shall never lack. Why? You are the glory of God. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in his glory. You are the glory of Jesus. You are his glory. When, when Jesus looks at you, Apostle Roderick, he is seeing his glory. When Jesus looks at you, Daisy, he is seeing his glory. When Jesus looks at you, Angel, he is seeing his glory. When Jesus looks at you, Mary, he is seeing his glory. You are the glory. You are the glory, Cassandra. You are the glory. You shall never lack. For God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in his glory. All that glory is in your inside. 
The glory is in your inside. Ah, Lord, the glory is in your inside. The glory, I declare the glory. The glory will meet you to, at your point of need. The glory is in your inside. Look at first John. Okay, look at John 17. I'm about to close and then we finish. John 17. Oh, I'm about to punish the devil. John 17. Verse 21 to 23. John 17, 21 to 23. And then we close. That's the last scripture. And then we close. John 17, 21 to 23. Watch this. That they may know. They, okay. Verse 20. Pretext. Verse 20. Pretext. Verse 20. I do not ask for these things only, but also for those who will believe in me. I do not ask for these things only. But for also those who will believe, talking about you, that have believed, watch this, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, so that the world may, may also, the world may believe that you have sent me. Watch this. Verse 22. Go Batanga Rezia. I, I declared it, I said it, that you are the glory. You are the glory, Rita. You are the glory. When Jesus looks at you, he's seeing the glory. Watch this. Verse 22. Stay there. I'm about to punish the devil. The glory that you gave me. Watch this. Pay attention. Don't leave. Don't miss this. The glory that you have given me. Ebo shakataya. The glory that you have given me. I have given it to them. Oh, my God. My God. So who has the glory? Florence, you have the glory. The glory that you gave me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one as we are one. So the glory has been given to you that when I see you, I see Jesus. As he is, so are we. So that we may be one. What Jesus can do, you can do. What cannot defeat Jesus cannot defeat you. If sickness cannot hold him down, sickness cannot hold you down. Why? Because of the glory. The glory you gave me, I have given it to them that we may be one. Josephine, you carry the glory. You are the glory. When Jesus looks at you, he is seeing the glory. Why? He said, Father, the glory that you gave me, I have given it to Josephine. Ah. Ah. How can you go wrong when you have the glory? The problem why is you are not seeing the manifestation of the glory is because you have failed to acknowledge it because you did not know. The Bible says, my people, they perish not because they lack power. My people be perish not because they lack anointing. My people perish because they lack knowledge. So knowledge now is being revealed. Your eyes of understanding enlightened. You are the glory. When Jesus looks at you, what is he seeing? The glory. How? Because he said, Father, the glory that you gave me, the glory. So watch this. Jesus went about doing good because the glory was upon him. Jesus, he was crucified. He was buried. On the third day, he rose again. What made him to rise again? Because of the glory. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead resides in you, believer. In you, it resides in you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says it shall quicken your mortal body. How can sickness be dominating in your life when you have the glory of God? Utilize the glory. Begin to acknowledge the glory. When you acknowledge the glory, sickness cannot hold you down. Sickness will check out. Because if sickness checked out from Jesus, it will check out from you. Why? By the same spirit. Why? The same spirit that raised him from the dead is the same spirit that is in you, a believer. You can never fail. But you have been failing, you have been struggling because you have failed to acknowledge. Jesus says to the Father, Father, the glory that you gave me, the glory that you gave me, you cannot go, my beloved, you cannot go wrong. I declare it in this season as your eyes of understanding are being enlightened. You cannot, listen, right now, right now, I declare, if there be any sickness in your body right now, by the reason of the glory that was given to Jesus and has been given unto you, I declare by reason of his glory, may that sickness be flushed out now in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Every spirit of stagnation is not your portion. Spirit of almost there is not your portion. Because Jesus fulfilled his assignment, you will fulfill your assignment. If Jesus could fulfill his assignment, even though there were obstacles, even though there were mountains, even though there were all these distractions, but he fulfilled his assignment, you too, because of the same glory, you will fulfill your assignment. You will fulfill your destiny. Stagnation is not your portion. Spirit of almost there is not your fault. You will fulfill your destiny. That contract, you will fulfill it. That marriage, you will enjoy it. That business, you will start it. And it will flourish by reason of the glory. By reason of the glory. He said, please understand this. He said, Jesus says to the Father, Father, the glory that you gave me, the glory that you gave me, the glory you gave me, I am giving it to them. The glory you gave me, I am giving it to Mama Sen, Mama Senorita. The glory that God gave his son Jesus, that same glory, not subtracted, not added, the same level of glory. He said, I am giving it to Mama Senorita. Mama Senorita, you cannot fail. What cannot defeat Jesus cannot defeat you. Ah, oh, Kayamando Bosha. Hey, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I feel Rebosha, Tayamande Rebosha. I feel the glory being made manifest in your life. That glory, Egebosha Tay. Hey, Ebosha. Look at this. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them. That they may be one, even as we are one. In them, in I, I in them, I in them, and you in me. That they may become perfectly one. <laughs> so that the world may know that you sent me and you loved them. And you loved them as you loved me. I don't know who I, I'm speaking to right about now. Father, I have given them the glory. That they may know that we are one. The same, oh God, Paradia Sujala Mahanta. Watch this. Watch this. Please pay attention. <clears throat> Watch this. He says, Father, the glory. Hi, I'm Mandebosha. That you gave me, I gave them. That they may know, number one, that we are one. Ha. And that the world may know that you love me and you love them the same way you loved me. I'm here to declare to some. I'm, I'm here to speak to somebody that is watching this broadcast. Irregardless, <coughs> irregardless of the challenges that you may be facing, Irregardless of the hurdles that are ahead of you, whatever that is being tormenting you, I'm here to let you know that the same way God loved his son <clears throat> is the same way God loves you. What he did for his son, he would do it for you. Because he loves you the same way he loves his son. On Mount Transfiguration, he said, this is my son. Ha! In whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. This is my beloved daughter. In whom I am well pleased. When Jesus looks at you, he is looking at the pleasure of the Father. Don't let anybody lie to you. If there was anything that has been afflicting or tormenting you, I'm here to announce and to declare this word. For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them all. I declare your deliverance from affliction right now in the name of Jesus deliverance from affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, the same way you loved me, you love them. Let the world know. 
So watch this. So when the world sees you, Feder, when the world sees you, they will see Jesus. Angel Msoni, Msomi, when the world sees you, ah, 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 they will see Jesus. Because as he is, so are we. You carry, you carry the glory. That's why the Bible then declares, and I close. <clears throat> Kings shall come to thy light. You are the light of the world, a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hid. Kings shall come to thy light. They shall come to thy dwelling. Kings, when we're talking about kings, I'm talking about people in authority. They will come and favor you. Oh, God help me. Kings will come and favor you. And when kings come, they don't normally come empty-handed. They come with gifts. Oh, God help me. I declare in this week that you're entering as you continue to shine because you are the glory may kings come to your dwelling they will come to your dwelling people in authority will favor you whatever that you've been trusting god for that is within the authorities i declare favor because of the glory i declare favor in the name of jesus and i declare and i decree by the authority of the risen, risen, risen Lord, I declare and I decree that your case is settled. In the name of Jesus, your case is settled. In the name of Jesus, your case is settled. In the name of Jesus, for you carry the presence. You carry the presence. You carry the presence of God. You are the glory of God. And I declare and I decree, shame will never be your portion. In the name of Jesus, favor is your portion. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare and I decree, may this week, may your children, the ones that you love so dearly, the ones that you gave up your life, you did not spare your life, but you gave it up for us all. How much more will you not also, with all things, graciously give them? Father, give them graciously all things. Meet them at their point of need. May this week be a week of them testifying. May this week be a week of them enjoying the joy of salvation. May this week be a week of them enjoying the goodness of the Lord. Father, I declare in this week. Ah, I speak good news for you this week. I speak good news for you. Listen, my beloved, let me say this. <clears throat> To my sisters, when you wake up and you're doing your hair nicely, this coming week, I want you to wake up. Do your hair nicely. As you are leaving the house, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. The moment you leave your house, declare it in the atmosphere. That the glory is living. Kibaros Mande. The glory is living. As in you are the glory. The glory is moving. So if you get in your car, said now the glory is on the move. So everywhere you shall go, because you have declared it in the atmosphere. The Bible says, whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. You shall declare and decree a thing. The Bible says it shall be established. So you declare this. You said the glory. You wake up while you're doing your hair, you're doing your makeup. You leave the house and say, the glory is on the move. Ha, I am the glory of God. Tell yourself everywhere, I am the glory of God. When God looks at me, he loves me. He's pleased by me. I am the glory. Today, I will manifest. Today, I will manifest. That's what you do. And for you, my brothers, square up your shoulders. Square up your shoulders. Everything that they had denied you. Kebo Shataya. Everywhere they had denied you, just tell them, I am the glory. You cannot deny the glory. If they could not deny Jesus, Kabatosha, they cannot deny me. Why? Because Jesus is in my inside. So when you deny me, you are denying Christ. How can you deny Christ? Who was in the beginning? 
who was in the beginning before Abraham, Gabo Shataya. So I declare and I decree this week, this week, you carry the glory as you move out. My Gabo I'm too excited. I can't wait to hear your testimony. I've been hearing testimonies. People have been sharing their testimonies in my Instagram, in my, what do you call it, my messenger. But I can't just wait to hear your testimony because it's this week that when you come to your place of knowledge of what you carry, you are the glory of God. You are the glory of God. The glory. I hear people say, oh, don't take God's glory. No, no, sir. The glory. He said, don't take God's glory. Eh, no, sir. No, ma'am. Jesus said, Father, the glory you gave me, I gave them. So who, who has the glory? It is you that has the glory. May this week be a, 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 a blessed week for you. May this week be a week of manifestation. May you walk in the glory of God. May, may, may your light shine that kings will come to your dwelling. You will not lack in this season. Every letter, every letter, every document that has been hanging, I declare it's settled in the name of Jesus. Every contract, I declare settled in the name of Jesus. Every application, I declare settled in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you carry the glory of God. My beloved, I would have loved to stay with you. But for me, mm, it is shalom. I can't wait to see you next week as we continue journeying on with the message. God bless you. God keep you. Mwah. Love you all. The glory. Remember, God loves you. Kabata, yaman. Yeah,